you could be doing, you know, the wrong exercise for your current health, the current hormonal situation that you're in, your current PCOS, it could be making things worse. In this video, I'm going to tell you the best exercises for PCOS weight loss. So let's get straight into the video. understand how overwhelming it can be trying to figure out the best exercise really wanting to achieve your goals to feel your best again to choose that body or this you desire so in this video i'm going to basically identify my top three best exercises that evidence has you know research has shown to be so great for pcos also from my own personal experience and from working with many pcos clients helping them achieve hormonal balance helping them to achieve their goals, whether it is weight loss, you know, through boosting their metabolism or just creating that healthy relationship with themselves and exercise. So without further ado, let's get straight into my top, my favorite PCOS exercise. And research has shown this form of exercise to be worthy of that top spot. So what is my number one favorite exercise for PCOS weight loss? Well, it requires some weight. <laughs> now, resistance training is, or weight training as many people know, is a type of exercise that causes the muscle to contract, leading to the development of muscle growth, strength, and endurance. Now, there's different ways to do resistance training. That can include dumbbells, like these. Resistant bags, such as these. We can do tons of exercises, which are really great for at-home workouts. I'll have the link to the resistance bands I personally use in the description box down below so you can check them out. Comes in tons of different weights from 10 pounds all the way up to 50 pounds. You can get a good amount of weight from these simple bands. Now there are tons of benefits to resistance training for PCOS. A study found for each 10% increase in muscle mass, there was 11% relative reduction in insulin resistance. When we contract our muscles during resistance training, we increase glucose uptake, which means sugar can be shuttled to the muscles independent of insulin. So lifting weight is a great way to increase insulin sensitivity and reduce insulin resistance. A second huge benefit of resistant training for women with PCOS is that it can reduce testosterone levels. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. I know we commonly think that, yes, because women with PCOS have high testosterone levels, that lifting weight can increase testosterone. But the opposite is actually true. Women with PCOS followed a 16-week resistance training program, and at the end of the study, the results show that these women had lowered their testosterone levels. A third reason for why I love resistance training, why it's one of my favorite exercises, is because it can boost weight loss by increasing your metabolism. The second great exercise for PCOS is yoga. Now. Yoga is a great exercise because it can help activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, many of us are mostly in that sympathetic, stressed out, fight or flight mode um, because you know stress is everywhere in our daily life. We're exposed to stress everywhere, not just you know sitting in traffic, deadlines at work, deadlines at school. You know, stress is everywhere. We're being exposed to it everywhere. So the good thing with yoga is that it activates that parasympathetic nervous system, taking us out of that fight or flight mode and bringing us, bring some relaxation, some calmness into our body to help bring hormone, and this is why it can help bring uh, achieve hormonal balance because it's bringing down cortisol. And through bringing down cortisol, it can in turn help, as we just have shown, can help with uh, reducing testosterone levels, DHEA levels, because it can help through lowering the stress. And a study found women who did, women with PCOS who did yoga three times a week, lowered their testosterone levels. And there's been plenty of studies showing how it can help improve 
you know, uh, low anxiety levels, depression, because it can help with achieving relaxation, the poses, the, the, the way it achieves that sense of calmness within, that state, the sense of uh, peace within the body. It, it's definitely a great form of exercise um, that can, or any kind of exercise that helps you achieve that parasympathetic to help you activate that parasympathetic nervous system whether it's also walking through nature and um, you know that kind of seeing uh, green and hearing the birds it can really help and yet another great benefit of yoga doing these poses is the improvement in your digestive health um, it can really help with bloating and constipation which I know is a very common thing that has to be addressed in order to help with you know, overall gut health, more about it, live with the detoxification. Um, so making sure that your digestive system is working optimally is key. And the, and the final exercise on the list, number three out of the best exercises research has shown to be great for women with PCOS is HIT, high intensity interval training. Now, I have a whole video talking about whether HIT is you know, HIT versus more low intensity steady state cardio, which you can check out by clicking the card here, or I'll also link it in the description box down below. Um, but to kind of summarize what I was speaking about in that video, there was a study that showed women who did HIT three times a week over the course of 10 weeks showed there was an improvement in insulin resistance. The reason why HIT is said to be so great for women with PCOS is because and insulin resistance is because it helps you expend lots of glucose during those full bursts of energy um, where you're going for a minute 30 seconds wherever it is you're changing the glucose balance in the muscles and during those rest periods you're activating insulin allowing glucose that's floating around in the bloodstream to enter the uh, muscles to be used as energy so that's the reason why it's a great exercise for PCOS in that instance it can help insulin resistance but the reason why it's number three on the list and why it's not number one <laughs> is because HIT is research has shown HIT can significantly raise cortisol levels. And as I keep like trying to reinforce, when we're trying to achieve hormonal balance, we really want to be bringing down cortisol to help take our body out of that fight or flight mode. We want to be lowering cortisol to help with hormonal balance. And, I, I, and in that video, I explained how, how yes, the research shows that you know there's that fat burn, that there's that afterburn effect where you burn more calories after doing HIIT rather than doing you know low intensity. But I did, ex but in that video, if you watch it, I recommend you watching it after this. That you most people think, oh, you're burning so many more calories after, but you really aren't. The kind of question I'll put to you, or what something I want you to think about before you decide to go and just do HIT multiple times a week, is to look at where you are in your health journey. How you know are you suffering from you know that chronic long-term stress? Are your uh, adrenals overstimulated? But we want to take an overall look at your body and to see how this exercise can be of benefit to address everything, not just the insulin resistance and therefore the weight loss, but if you have these long-term chronic stress over stimulated adrenals, then that's going to hinder your weight loss progress and your hormonal balance because again, stress is the number one driver of hormonal balance and um, we we need to look at that we need to look at both sides it's good for this sure the research says that but i know many women who have been going full into this intensity of you know hit and realize that they're kind of burnt out their their symptoms are worse they're not improving they're not losing the weight so that's the kind of question you i, I want to put to you and i want you to think about when thinking about hit but again, cardio is super important. There's no denying that you shouldn't be doing cardio. It's just realizing and being honest with yourself where you are in your journey. See what level of intensity can your body take, can your hormones take at this moment? 
not, you know, this isn't to say that in the future you can never do HIIT or a specific exercise. As a personal trainer, I'm all for doing an exercise you enjoy it and can see yourself doing consistently because consistency is key. But the thing is, when you're suffering from hormonal issues, when you're, when you're burnt out, when you're chronically stressed, the exercise matters. Just like the nutrition matters, exercise matters. You can't be doing something that makes things worse. You have to do the right exercise for the, your body at, the, at this moment in time, current health. So have a think about that. So ask you ask yourself these questions after you exercise and do hit, for example. After you do your workout, how do you feel? Do you feel energized or do you feel lethargic type and you want to take a nap? If it's the latter, but you want to take a nap and you're exhausted, I want you to reassess what you're doing. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope it helped. I really hope that it gave you an insight into how you should be exercising for your PCOS. If you have any questions or if you are looking for a personalized exercise program and some nutritional recommendations that can help you boost your metabolism, support the thyroid, then either send me an email at info at pieceoracle.com or visit my website pieceoracle.com if I have it linked in the description box down below. Check out my coaching program so we can work together to create an exercise routine that works for you, helps your hormones and helps you achieve your own personal goals. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, comment, let me know what your favourite exercise is, what you're currently doing. Give it a share and subscribe for plenty more videos. Catch you in the next one.